Hello and welcome to the TI Precision Labs hands-on experiment on crossover distortion. In this experiment we will compare the performance of two different rail-to-rail -rail amplifiers. One amplifier, the OPA316, has input crossover distortion. The other amplifier, the OPA320, does not have crossover distortion. In this experiment we will measure the degradation of THD caused by crossover distortion. For this lab, we will use the OPA320 and OPA316 datasheet to show if the device has crossover distortion and the voltage level that the distortion occurs at. This experiment will not use simulation as SPICE models do not model THD and crossover distortion. Finally, we will measure the two amplifiers. To make this measurement, you will need the PLAB SAR EVM PDK and its associated software. The EVM can be purchased and the software can be downloaded using the provided link. The schematics at the left hand side show the circuits we will evaluate. The only difference between the two circuits is the op amp being used. The right hand side shows small excerpts from amplifier data sheets. Specifically we are looking at the common mode range and the common mode rejection or the CMRR specification. The common mode range for both amplifiers goes beyond the power supply rails. For the OPA316, the common mode range is 0.2 volts below the negative rail and 0.2 volts above the positive rail. In this example, the supply rails are ground and 5.2, so the common mode range for the OPA316 is minus 0.2 volts to 5.4 volts. The OPA320 common mode range can be calculated similarly to be minus 0.1 volts to 5.3 volts. Now let's look at the common mode rejection specification. Although both devices are rail to rail, the common mode rejection specification for the OPA316 is broken into two ranges. The first range is 1.4 volts below the positive rail. Note that this restricted range has 10 dB better performance than the full rail-to-rail -rail range. On the other hand, the OPA320 lists only one common mode rejection specification and the specified rejection is quite good. That is, it is greater than 100 dB. The point is that the OPA316 CMRR is better in the restricted range because it avoids the crossover region. The upper common mode limit of 1.4 volts below the positive supply is about where the crossover distortion will happen. So in this case the crossover happens at 3.8 volts which is calculated by subtracting 1.4 volts from the 5.2 volt supply. The OPA320 on the other hand has good performance across the entire common mode range so you can assume it's a zero crossover distortion device. Also note that most zero crossover amplifiers will highlight this feature on the datasheet front page, whereas rail-to-rail -rail devices with crossover distortion may not emphasize this limitation. Now that we've done the simple calculation, let's set up the hardware and measure the performance. First set the jumpers on the PSI and the PLABS hardware as shown. Next, plug the PHI into the PLAB's channel 2 connection and install the OPA316 into the channel 2 socket. Connect the PSI to the PLAB's board using the SMA cable as shown. Finally, plug the USB cables into your computer. When connecting the USB cables to the computer, an LED on the PHI should blink and an LED on the PSI will illuminate continuously. Let's pause for a moment and set the jumpers. Now let's start the software by selecting the PLABS SAR EVM icon on the Start All Programs menu. Once the software is running, you should notice the green Hardware Connected message at the bottom of the software. Next, change the sampling rate to 500 kilo samples per second. Finally, press here to expand the controls for the PSI hardware. Let's pause and start the software. When power is first connected to the PHI, you will see two blinking LEDs and one solid LED. The PSI will have one solid LED. Once the software boots up, you will notice the power LEDs on the PLABS board illuminate. Now let's set up the PSI. 
First, enter the peak-to-peak -peak amplitude and the DC offset required. Let's start with 2 volts peak-to-peak -peak and a 1.5 volt offset for this experiment. Next, press Update to save the changes. Finally, click on this button to enable the PSI output. Note that the output is enabled when it is the teal color as shown and it is disabled when it is red. Also notice that the graphical display indicates the output is about 0.5 volts to 2.5 volts as expected. Pause and enter the PSI settings. Press Capture to read the ADC. Notice that the entire graph is filled with points. This is because the time scale isn't adjusted properly and we need to zoom in to see a sine wave. Left click and drag to zoom in. Notice that the waveform fills the entire graph. This is because the graph automatically rescales in the auto mode. Change to the fit code to range mode to see the waveform on the full scale range. Pause and adjust your display. Now you can see the waveform on the full scale range which is 5 volts in this example. Also, notice that the waveform range is 0.5 volts to 2.5 volts, which matches what we entered using the PSI controls. This display is useful as it helps us see that the signal is nowhere near the crossover region of 3.8 volts. Now change the page to spectral analysis. Pause and switch page to spectral analysis. Notice that under the spectral analysis page we can see important AC measured results like SNR and THD. Also, as a side note, the SNR in this experiment could be improved by applying a full scale signal. In this experiment we are intentionally using a 2 volt peak to peak signal so that we can see the effects of crossover distortion. For best SNR we should really use a 5 volt signal. Note that the frequency domain display shows the fundamental, noise floor, and harmonics. To zoom in on the harmonics, click Mark Harmonics. Pause and select Mark Harmonics. Here we can see the zoomed in view of the harmonics. Notice that each of the harmonics is labeled H2 to H10. The display shows the nine harmonics that are used in the THD calculation. Also notice the harmonics are listed in a table format as well. Click here to minimize or maximize the PSI controls as needed. Now that we have gone through the hardware setup, we can fill out a table that compares the AC performance of the OPA316 and the OPA320 versus common mode voltage. To simplify collecting data, you can click on the number in the GUI cell and hit Control C to copy the number. Then click in the table and press Ctrl V to paste the number. Also, for each row in the table, you will have to enter the amplitude from the VIN column and the DC offset from the VCM column. For example, for the first row, enter 2 volts peak to peak for the amplitude control and 1.5 volts into the DC offset control. This table shows the expected results for the OPA316 and OPA320. Let's look at the first row. The input is set to 2 volts peak to peak or 1 volt peak. The common mode voltage or offset is set to 1.5 volts. The sine wave negative peak is at VCM minus V peak. In this case, it's 1.5 volts minus 1 volt, which is equal to 0.5 volts. Similarly, the positive peak is 1.5 volts plus 1 volt, which is 2.5 volts. The positive peak, denoted Vmax, is the number we need to pay attention to. When Vmax is below the crossover voltage, we will not see crossover distortion and the AC performance should be good. When Vmax is above the crossover voltage, we should see crossover distortion and the AC performance should be degraded. The OPA316 crossover region happens at 3.8 volts, so we should see degradation above this voltage. Sure enough, you can see that the OPA316 THD degrades significantly for Vmax of 4 volts and greater.
Notice, however, that the OPA320 has good performance across all common mode voltages because it is a zero crossover device. Now you could run the experiment for the OPA320 and the OPA316. Your results should have the same trend as the expected results, but the specific value may differ somewhat. For example, you may see a THD of 100 dB for Vmax of 2.5 volts and 67 dB for Vmax of 4.8 volts. The point isn't to focus on the exact value, but to notice that THD dramatically decreases once you enter the crossover region. A common error is to forget to adjust the sampling rate to 500 kilosamples per second. This is needed as the OPA316 is not fast enough for the ADS8860 full sampling rate of 1 megasample per second. Graphing the results from the table shows that the OPA320 THD is relatively unaffected by the maximum input signal amplitude, but the OPA316 performance degrades when the maximum signal passes the crossover voltage of 3.8 volts. The attached Excel spreadsheet can be accessed by clicking on the icon in the PowerPoint presentation. This spreadsheet contains a table from the last slide and the graph shown here. When collecting data for the OPA320, use the coupon card labeled OPA320 Good Filter 1. All other jumper settings and connections are the same for both amplifiers. That concludes the hands-on experiment. I hope this was useful to you. Thanks for your time.